morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. All together now. One, two, three. Good morning. All right. There you go. If you would, please stake out with me your outlines for today's message. And also turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we are going to be reading verses 1 through 7, but I am going to be nice today, and uh, you can just be seated, okay? Because I know it's, it's a lot of work standing up. Okay, since you don't agree with me, everybody stand up as we get ready to read God's words together. Please, if you're able to, please stand with me. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said... Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Lord Jesus, again, we do praise you and thank you for this day, for this blessing, this opportunity of being together and worshiping you as a church family. We are thankful that you are here with us through your Holy Spirit, guiding and directing us and hearing our songs uh, being sung to you. And now we ask you as we look into your word and hear your message for us today, once again we ask you to open our eyes, our ears, and especially our heart to what you have to say. And we pray this in your loving name. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Now... How many fishermen we have here? You like to fish? All right. Melvin, you like to fish? And you like to fish. Okay. Well, sorry, I'm not going to use you guys in my example today. But I am going to use Melvin, John, Bob, and let's see, who else can I pick on today? Uh, why? All right, we'll pick on Wyatt. All right, we'll pick on Wyatt. All right, so one day, Melvin, John, Bob, and Wyatt went out fishing together, okay? Now, Wyatt is, you know, kind of new at, the, at this day, and they're out in a boat. Melvin decided, he realized that he forgot a can of pop. So he got out of the boat, walked on top of the water, went to the, yeah, hoo hoo, yeah, you just wait, okay? <laughs> walked on top of the water, went to the, went to the truck, grabbed the can of pop, walked back, got back in the boat. But John Bob realized that he forgot a can of pop. And why is there watching? Okay, how are these old guys doing this? Okay. So John Bob gets out, walks on top of the water, goes to the truck, gets his can of pop, walks back. Why is thinking to himself, okay, if these old guys who weigh a lot more than me can walk on top of the water, I can do this. Wyatt decides, okay, he says, okay, I forgot my can of pop too. So he gets out, plump, right to the bottom of the pond he goes. Melvin looks at John Bob, he goes, maybe we should have shown him where the rocks are first. <laughs> There's an account of John Wesley, who went, one day went to visit General Oglethorpe, who was at that time governor of the colony of Georgia. While they were talking, while they were visiting that day, General Oglethorpe got to discussing with uh, John Wesley about a situation in where someone had uh, hurt him deeply, hurt his feelings. And he made this comment, I shall never forgive him. Talking about the person who had hurt him or done something wrong. I shall never forgive him. To which John Wesley responded by saying, then I hope, sir, you never sin." I hope, sir, you never sin. Now let me ask you something. Have you ever known someone who never showed mercy? Never showed kindness? Never showed any type of liking anybody or anything like that? And when they died, and how the community responded? They might have gone to the visitation whatever, for other family members, but... Were they there for the person that maybe they didn't or who didn't show the mercy towards them? Was any mercy, mercy shown to that person? John Wesley was reminded of Jesus' teaching that those who are not mercy, those who don't show mercy or are merciful or are forgiving, 
will not be treated with mercy. Living without mercy is actually the prelude to dying without mercy. On the other hand, living with mercy results in being treated with mercy, as we see that in our scripture. Jesus said that in our scripture. If you haven't closed your Bible, let's read verse 7 again together, out loud together. I'm using the NIV, by the way. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be what? Shown mercy. Now looking at this beatitude today, we're going to be looking at three different questions and answering those questions. What is mercy? How can we become merciful or full of mercy? And what can we expect in being full of mercy? So first off, we're going to say, what is mercy? So as a show of hands, you don't have to speak out loud on this, but who has what they believe is a general idea of what mercy is? Okay. Who has no idea what to think what mercy is? Who just doesn't know how to raise their hand? Okay. All right. Okay, that's okay, okay? But that's what our, we're looking at first. What is mercy? God's mercy in the Bible is characterized by patience, kindness, and relief provided to those who are in suffering or who are in need. Okay, being kind to somebody, patient with somebody, okay, or helping somebody who is suffering or is in t some type of need is basically how the Bible describes mercy. It reflects God's m willingness to withhold judgment and extend compassion, as in Psalm 103, where it reads, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Now, if you go back to the Old Testament, were there times that the Lord got mad at Israel? Sure. Were there times that God showed mercy by loving kindness and not immediately judging Israel, giving them hundreds of years in some cases to repent? And then when they didn't repent, bringing them back, maybe through some trials, some tribulations, being taken and captive, but then re re bringing the nation back to him showing kindness and mercy, right? Okay, so we see that. Depending on which translation of the Bible you read, the word mercy appears for, in the, for the Hebrew word and Greek word 130 to 280 times uh, in, in describing God's compassion, kindness, and loving kindness. In the Bible, when it's talking about mercy, it's talking about God's compassion, his kindness, and his loving kindness. One thing we have to understand, mercy is not salvation. Okay? When we talk about God's mercy, we are not talking about his salvation. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't give salvation. I'm just saying that that's a different situation. We'll talk more about that at a different time. But mercy is something a little bit different than salvation. Salvation is what we do or what we receive when we ask God for what? Forgiveness. When we make him our Lord and Savior. Right? Mercy is what God gives us when yet, even as believers, but especially when we aren't believers, is something that God gives us by not judging us yet. Okay? It's that time that he's giving us to, or extend, or giving to us to come to salvation before he judges us. Okay, just like he did with Israel. If you look, go back there in the Old Testament. He gave them time to repent before he judged them. And it's the same thing with, with us. He gives us time to come to him and so, for salvation. So mercy and salvation are a little bit different. In looking at what mercy is, we're first going to be looking at what mercy is not. And the first thing there that we're going to look at is Mercy is not emotionalism. Mercy is not emotionalism. To be merciful is to be 
more than just shedding tears for a certain situation that somebody might be in. Now, of course, a lot of people who are merciful do shed tears. They feel sorry for people when they're hurting, okay? Uh, we went to see If the other night. If you're emotional, be prepared. Even though it's a, you know, okay, I'm, you go watch it and you'll see what I'm saying, okay? My wife had to grab hold of my arm a couple times and say, it's only a movie, okay? <laughs> But being merciful is more than just shedding tears or feeling sorry for somebody that's in a certain situation. Jesus displayed emotions, such as the time when he, was, when he, when he wept at the side of the grave of, of Lazarus, when he was there with Martha and Mary and his friends. He had mad, stupid madness. He had sadness about the death of Lazarus. But he went and showed mercy through his actions. Okay, it wasn't just that, the fact that he felt sorry for him. He did far more than just cry. He gave himself to those who were crying. He did a miracle for them. So in his feeling compassion, he also went to the next step in showing mercy by doing something for them and raising their, their brother and their friend. We've all had times where we were sad to see someone hurting, okay? We've all had those times, and we'll continue to have those times. Their sadness may even cause us to have emotions, to lead us to cry as well. But if all we do is cry and do nothing to help them, all we've done is shown emotions. We haven't done mercy. We haven't shown them mercy. Mercy is going that next step with your emotions or whatever and actually helping that person. Okay? So that's what we have to understand. Mercy goes beyond emotions. Mercy is not humanitarianism. Humanitarianism. Excuse me. I'll learn how to speak one of these days. Mercy is not humanitarianism. 1 Corinthians 1.13 says, If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. That's 1 Corinthians 13.3. It is great to give clothing to somebody who needs it, okay? Especially good clothing, okay? Like when we outwear or we get tired of it or whatever and we give it to the local shop or to give it to somebody, that's great. Or we go and buy brand new clothing for a clothing drive. Okay? That's great. But mercy goes beyond those great acts. As the scripture says, we can give our bodies, we can give everything we have, but if we're not showing love, if we're not loving those people, then all we've done is just an act. We've all just done that act of giving them something. When I was on the fire department, uh, we knew that every time we went out, there was, you were in, you're facing a possibility of something not going right or getting hurt or something like that. And you could always tell, and I hate to put it this way, but you could always tell when somebody was in it to actually help somebody or help the community and those that were doing it just to kind of make themselves look good, okay? It happens, no matter what career you're in or whatever, okay? It, it happens. Acts of mercy that are valid are void of an attitude, uh, excuse me, acts of mercy that are void of an attitude of mercy are invalid. In other words, if we're not caring for that person or the situation, the mercy of which Christ spoke is far more than just the mechanics of doing something. It's about having a heart for that person that you're doing something for. So mercy is not humanitarian. We can be doing great stuff all day long, but if we're not feeling it here, we're just simply doing the acts. So, let's look at what mercy is. Okay? Mercy is an attitude. Mercy is an attitude. It's not something that, okay, well, I'm going to turn off mercy today and I'll turn it on again tomorrow. 
I don't feel like being merciful today, so I'm just going to shut it off today, and maybe I'll feel like doing it tomorrow, or being so I'll just turn it back on. It's more than just uh, you know, giving at the end of the year so that I can gain a tax break. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Don't get mad at me for that. It just goes to the next step. It's about an attitude of being merciful. Mercy is demonstrated by Christ involves the way a person truly feels. You look at Christ. He did more than just actions. You could see how he truly cared for people. How he truly wanted to be with them. Uh, a lot of times, quote unquote, questionable, questionable people that nobody else would have anything to do with. But yet he was there with them because of the fact he wanted to give them mercy, be their friend, be their savior. Mercy is to see others as Christ sees them. And to feel towards others the way Christ feels, feels towards people. In short, mercy is to have the attitude of Christ toward everyone. Even those we don't want to have that attitude towards. And that's where we get caught sometimes. I'll show mercy to this person over here, but I don't like what this person's doing. So they, somebody else can show them mercy. And we have to ask ourselves that old saying, what would Jesus do? WWJD. That's been a while since that's been used. Are we picking and choosing who we're going to be merciful towards? And if we are, then we have to ask ourselves, are we truly letting mercy rule us? Do we truly have that attitude of mercy? Because mercy is action. When springtime comes, it's kind of hard to keep it a secret. All right, we start to see the trees. We start to see the farmers out, you know, going up and down the roads who people we have to be merciful for because they're in a rush right now. So I don't want to hear anybody comment about how they take up the road. Okay? Okay, but we can be compassionate to what they're going through right now, everything that's been going on. There's a great example of people that we can be merciful. Now, next year might be different. I'm just kidding. Okay? But just as springtime is hard to cover up because everything that's taking place, all the beauty that's starting to come back and everything, it's mercy is something that's hard for people not to see if we're truly doing it. When mercy is translated into action, we are kind. We are gracious. We are not judgmental of others. We look for the best in others. We ask ourselves questions like, what circumstances led this person to do whatever it is that maybe they did wrong? Or get mixed up in the life that they got mixed up in. We look for the best in others. And rather than, how can I expose what they're doing? Or how can I bring the light or something like that? Or how can I make that person... You know, people see what they're actually like or something like that. Or to call them names or anything like that. Redemption, not condemnation, will actually be our concern when we truly have mercy. Redemption, not condemnation, will be our concern. We'll be truly concerned about if we're seeing the person mix up with something, what life they're leading and what the consequences of that life is. Mercy that is action ministers to others. In other words, we see someone having a hard time, we see somebody that's mixed up in something, lovingly we go to them. We don't say, well, that's the preacher's job. Or that's so-and-so's job. I'll let somebody else do it. If it's weighing on our hearts, it's a good indication that God's calling us to do something. Now, we can go get advice on how to handle it. I get that. But mercy is action. Mercy that is action ministers to others. And it doesn't just have to be in words, but people see our actions. When we're compassionate to people, whether they admit it or not, they're going to know it. 
It's going to make a difference on them one way or another. The mercy that is action forgives others. Mercy that is action forgives others. Perhaps there's no greater expression of love than just that, forgiveness. When we have every right, at least in our own mind, to be resentful or mad at somebody, but choose to forgive, we experience happiness. And that person experiences mercy. So now that we have, kind of have an idea what mercy is, how can we become merciful? And remember, that also means full of mercy. How can we become merciful or full of mercy? Maybe someone is thinking, blessed are the merciful. That's great. But how can I become full of mercy? How do I go from criticizing or calling people names or anything like that to having compassion and kindness and mercy towards them? How can we change? Okay? Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that people aren't mercy, so don't throw a hymnal at me. I'm just throwing the question out there. Remember your own need for mercy. Remember your own need for mercy. Last week I shared with you how there's times when I'm at a stoplight and somebody doesn't get going right when, you know, it's red and it turns green, okay? And they don't get going within the first two seconds. And I'm saying, not, I'm not screaming it out the window because I'm afraid that two tall Jones will come back out and beat me up, okay? But I'm, you know, I scream out, it doesn't get any greener in America. My wife is up here copying. She knew it. It's like I said it before. Then the other day, I shared that last Sunday. The other day, I'm in Shelbyville. I'm at the stoplight. It's red. I'm in line first. I get the daydreaming. The light turned red. I didn't, excuse me, the light turned green, excuse me. Yeah, you go on the green, you stop on the red. Okay, okay. All right, you know where I'm going anyway. I'm still sitting there when the light turns green. I'm just daydreaming. Okay? The person has been back of me. Beep, beep, beep. I'm here. What are you doing? It's still, oh, okay. Okay? So you get where I'm going with this? Do we need, do we have need for people to be merciful to us? Basically what I'm asking. So we need to be merciful to those around us. The same principle applies to those to remembering our needs for a savior. To show mercy to those around us who have the same needs for a savior. It goes way beyond traffic lights or anything like that or the farmer coming down the road or something like that. It's about remembering those who are caught up in a lifestyle that they probably did, had no intention ever getting caught up in and trying to understand their situation and being compared. Now, I'm not saying to accept sinfulness. That's not what I'm saying. But sometimes to reach out to people and to be merciful to them, it includes or involves trying to understand what got them to that point to begin with. Become more acquainted so that leads us to our next point. Become more acquainted with someone we are inclined to judge. And let's face it, if we're human, there are times we face where we become judgmental. Whether we want to admit it, there's times we, each one of us, become judgmental. We may not like it, but it happens. You know, my guess is that that person, <clears throat> excuse me, who cut us off going down the road, okay? Or whatever, you know, we're driving down the road and somebody cuts us off and we get all mad about it. My guess is that person didn't really have the intention to cut us off. Maybe they're in a hurry to go to the hospital because they got a loved one. They're maybe they're daydreaming. The same thing that when we didn't intentionally cut somebody else off when we've done the same thing, okay? Excuse me. Chances are when we criticize for someone for a certain lifestyle that they may be mixed up in, we have no idea what drove them to that situation to begin with. 
For example, we often have a judgmental attitude to those who are addicted to drugs, and especially right now, the big one right now is heroin. Okay? But did you realize that 76% of those who are on heroin or addicted to heroin right now got addicted to heroin because of laws that when doctors were prescribing the regular painkillers, the, the, uh, the prescription painkillers were taken away from them because of some laws that were enacted. The people still had the pain from that they were experiencing. Instead of dealing with that situation, they just took everything away from them. So their only option to their, in their mind was to go to heroin. It was so easily accessible. 76% of those that are addicted to heroin went through that, according to statistics. Now, I'm not giving a, I'm just trying to give us an idea of looking and getting to know the situation with people. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching a, a thing on a, a Bible uh, internet deal, and they're talking with this young uh, boy, uh, a young child, 10 years old. Okay, wanting to go through a sex change operation at 10 years old. Again, the hot topic right now. And if I'm touching on somebody making us uneasy, that's okay. But sometimes we got to get uneasy. But at 10 years old, this, boy, this child is saying that, okay, he wanted to go through the sex change operation. What they were, then later on, they got talking about how this child from the time he was two, was being told by people around him, well, you act more like a girl. So you must be a girl. The thing is, a lot of adults have been told that. You act more this way. So maybe, and when it's being taught and everything, the thing, and we can discuss that whole topic a different time. My point is simply this. Getting to know the person on why they're in that situation, instead of just instantly judging them, getting to know them. Prejudice means prejudging or making an estimate of others without knowing the facts. And we frequently do that. Without knowing the facts, we just start talking about their, having our preconceived ideas of what's happening. It's easy to look at a situation and criticize a person that we don't know or maybe even a person we do know. So we need to start understanding what's behind the situation. Allow Christ to show his mercy through us. Allow Christ to show his mercy through us. Colossians 1.27 says, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope and glory. What Paul is telling the church in Colossia there is simply this. Christ is in you. Let Christ work in you so others see Christ in you. Okay, he was talking to the Jewish believers. He said, hey, you have been given Christ. Let the Gentiles that you live around now see Christ in you. Is in a nutshell what Paul is telling the people there to do. Christ is in us. Our only hope of becoming a loving, merciful person is with Christ in us. As we surrender our bitterness or resentment to Christ, and let him take over and allow him to live and work freely through us, mercy becomes a normal attitude when we allow him to do that. And then our last question. What can we expect as a result? What can we ex expect as a result? The mercy that comes to those who are merciful includes the following things. First, peace with ourselves. Peace with ourselves. There's a gentleman that I had on my paper. I had a paper up from the time I was in third grade. I almost said three years old, but the time I was third grade to freshman in school. There's a, uh, a young man in his family that was on my paper out. Uh, who also my mom had babysat them, but that's not part of the story, so I shouldn't even brought it up. Anyway, he had also uh, been in Vietnam. Okay, pretty much fresh out of Vietnam. Okay, so a lot of different things. And 
that going on there. And this man was very hostile, uh, to say the least, towards, towards people. Then there was a change that took place. He got saved. Okay? And it took some work on, on his part. Don't get me wrong. But you started seeing a change in this man. And the reason that that took place was that somebody took this guy under their wing and just simply started showing him Christ. Just simply started, you know, not a whole big sermon or anything like that, but just simply started loving this man and brought peace. Mercy from others. Mercy from others is something else that we can expect as a result. Proverbs 15.1 A gentle answer turns away wrath. In many ways, life is like a mirror. They were talking about mirrors in Sunday school class today a little bit. Life reflects what you put into it. If we are unkind, life becomes unkind. If we judge we will be judged. On the other hand, love produces love, and mercy produces mercy. Another result, mercy from God. Mercy from God. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Every believer must seek to manifest a forgiving spirit as often that's needed. What did Jesus tell Peter when Peter asked him, how many times do I have to forgive somebody? Okay. The point is what? Keep on forgiving them. Now, Jesus isn't saying set yourself up for somebody to do something, okay? That's a different thing. But he does say when somebody is truly coming to you and asking you for forgiveness, you're to forgive them. Okay? Excuse me. To receive pardon from the perfectly holy God and then refuse to pardon others when they're sinful against us is actually abuse of the mercy that we have been given. Now, is it hard to forgive some people? Sure. Okay? So what do we do? Pray. Pray. It's got to be the first thing. We will never be full and have compassion like Christ if we're not praying and trying to seek it. If all we're saying, okay, I'm going to try to be like Christ, I'm going to try to do it all on my own, we're going to keep on failing. It's just not going to happen. It's important to understand that this verse is not saying that somehow we earn salvation if we forgive people. That's not what that verse is saying. That verse is saying simply, remember Christ has forgiven you and let him work through us to forgive others. Is what Jesus was pointing out there. That's why we need to understand the importance of repentance. Repentance is far more than us just simply coming to Christ and saying, I'm sorry for my sins. Repentance is taking his help and changing us. You know, I've heard people say over and over again that Christ loves us unconditionally. Absolutely right. And that's why he doesn't want us to stay in the situation that we are in before we came to him. When we come to him and ask for forgiveness of sin, he doesn't want us to stay in that sin. And if that sin is not showing mercy to others, he doesn't want us to stay in that situation of not showing mercy. He wants us with his help to get out of it. It's the same thing when we tell people that are addicted, have an addiction. Christ came to you, get out of the addiction. Well, they can't do it by themselves without who? Christ. And it's the same way with us. We can't show mercy, the mercy of Christ, without Christ. And that's what repentance is, is letting him work through us to change us. So this unconditional love of Christ is not about, okay, Christ loves me so much that he loves me unconditionally. Yes, he does love you unconditionally, but he loves us so much to change us so we get away from all that junk that keeps separating us from him. 
That is why we need to understand the importance of us showing others mercy. So that they can have that chance to understand. Because if we're not, we've all heard this before, church is full of hypocrites. And to a point, it is. Sometimes a lot of it is misunderstanding. But if we're going around claiming Christ has forgiven us or forgiven me and refusing, now there's a difference from refusing to forgive somebody and having and struggling with it. If you're struggling with it, that means you're wanting to forgive that, but somehow you're still holding on. But if you're flat, I'll say, I will never forgive that person for something, then we're abusing the mercy that Christ has given us. But if you're struggling with it, that also tells me that you have a heart that you want to change. And Christ will change you if you let him. And believe me, I have people in my life, still today, I struggle at times, hey, have I truly forgiven that person for whatever? Okay? Because when somebody hurts us, we take it personally. Obviously. But when we hurt Christ, he takes it personally. But yet he personally went to the cross to die for us, to show us not just mercy, but to bring us forgiveness and salvation. One last question. We said this almost every time that we talked about our series. Who was Jesus talking to when he gave these beatitudes? His disciples people who were already following him. There might have been a couple other people there, but the, it was directed at his disciples, at his followers. Today, who's this message directed to? Us. He's not saying, hey, please show mercy. He's commanding to show mercy. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do praise you and thank you for salvation, for forgiveness, for the mercy that you've shown us in so many different ways and the call to show mercy to those around us. And we know that we cannot do it on ourselves by ourselves. If we're trying, we will continually mess up. We may show it one day, but then one day we're going to mess up. But Lord, we know that you are always here with us and we praise you and thank you for that. But we ask you that if there's any way that we are not showing mercy, show it to us. Help us to be more like you and be truthful about that situation. And if there's someone that we're not being compassionate to or showing loving kindness or forgiveness to, work on our hearts today. Lord, we do pray again that there's someone who is struggling with this or doesn't know if they've truly asked, asked you to be their Savior. Whatever is weighing on their heart today, Lord, we just pray that you just speak to them. They need to talk with somebody, have them go up to somebody, a friend or, or whoever, come down front or whatever and say, hey, I just need to talk. I need somebody just simply to pray for me or to pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this message that you have given to us. We just pray this in your loving name. Amen.